I'm uh, Tom Kralidis, and I'm on the OSGO Board of Directors, the founder of this project and a long-time contributor to free and open-source software and open standards. Join us tonight, also a contributor of open-source uh, projects, OSGO Chagrin member, and developer relations with OGP. Great, so with the introductions out of the way, we are here to give a mid-year update on, uh, on PyJo API. So we're going to walk through the project, talk about some core capabilities, what we've been up to lately, um, featured pro selected and featured uh, recent projects, and give you a view into uh, what we're looking at in the future as well. Project overview, the project was created um, in 2018, and it became a, uh, a OSGO project in 2022 in Florence, and it's also a, uh, a reference implementation. So PyJo API has been around for a good six years now, and we've been continuing to evolve with new support and uh, new functionality for uh, standards and, and, and many other related things. So, It's a geospatial web data framework, uh, API framework, that implements the OGC API suite of standards. So if, uh, if you need to know more about the OGC API standards, you know, please, please feel free and ask questions. And Joanna from OGC is here as well. So uh, she has everything OGC API, so feel free to reach out. Um, which means REST, JSON, Open API, Swagger, so a clean break from the first generation of, uh, of OGC web services. It is OGC compliant on, um, on a number of standards and it is an OGC reference implementation on uh, a number of the standards implemented as well. Like I said, it's an OSGO project, um, large international team, numerous core contributors, and like many free and open source projects, we stand on the shoulders of um, you know, the giants in terms of uh, the, under, the upstream uh, software that we use. Relatively easy install, um, uh, although it is getting a bit more complex as we start to add more functionality and more, more, more dependencies, but the basic idea is that you should be able to stand up the project very quickly. Um, and be able to uh, see some test data. Again, it's a uh, abstract API, which has, uh, is driven from a, by a configuration. It has a plugin architecture, so there is uh, an abstract plugin framework where you can provide your own plugins for, for data providers or for providing new formats. You can even do your own theme, so if you want to do an HTML theme um, for, for, for look and feel, you can do that as well. We, uh, uh, we think we have an easy enough deployment um, and minimal core dependencies, but that is, is always a challenge because we're continuing to try to keep things uh, as minimal as possible. Again, pl uh, provider plugin framework. We deal with feature data, coverage data, metadata, maps, tiles, environmental data, um, stack, and a number of different other data types and standards, if you will. We also have a number of bridges in the, in the project to help you um, provide a bridge to your WMS, so you can put PyJo API on top of your WMS to provide new style services while you're, um, while you're transitioning from the first generation OGC services to the next generation. And because it's all a plugin framework, you can implement your own. And we have a, a growing number of community plugins that people are, uh, are building for their own functionality that they're making available to the community. And we also have a processing framework, which allows you to run uh, processes at this point in Python um, to deploy with via OGC API processes. And uh, quickly, there's the community plugins and themes, and we support JSON-LD, schema.org, and, uh, and linked data. Again, easy enough uh, uh, in terms of uh, deployment, number of different distributions. I'll move it over to Joanna. So uh, is any other OGC API? Uh, it starts with a landing page, this is where everything starts. And from there, you can navigate to the conformance declaration, where you can see uh, to which uh, OGC APIs uh, the server complies to. And then you can also navigate to the Open API definition. So there's a machine this readable description of the API. And also to the collection pages and the different uh, types of collection that are supported in the API. Is it? I was trying to get the question. Okay, so uh, this is the Open API definition. So uh, all the OGC APIs are based on Open API. And here you have uh, the, the description of the API, the machine readable description. Uh, if you want, you also have an HTML version that you can uh, explore and try the different endpoints that are available. 
So, um, Pygea API supports uh, OGC API features, not all supports, but it's also uh, reference implementation. It supports uh, OGC API coverages. Uh, OGC API records, uh, it's uh, not yet uh, an approved standard, but it's already supported uh, in OGC API, in Pygea API. OGC API maps, which is also a candidate standard still. And uh, OGC API tiles, uh, it's a reference implementation for, for the API. OGC API, process, OGC API processes, um, it's uh, also supported. So this is a, an approved standard, and uh, PyG API is in the, the process of um, being certified for the OGC API process. This is also a reference implementation for OGC API EDR, or Environmental Data Retrieval. This is uh, an API that is very useful for people working with multi-dimensional uh, data, normally environmental data, um, something that we uh, often call uh, data cubes. And it uh, also supports uh, something which is um, Special te uh, Temporal Asset Catalog, STAC, uh, which is uh, a community standard for OGC. There's HTML templating, so you can you have support to uh, customize uh, your, uh, the look of the, of the pages. It's very flexible. And recently it was introduced uh, an admin API. So it means that uh, basically the functionality Expose uh, through um, through an API, and you can do basically everything. Uh, this means that uh, there's a lot of potential to develop other applications based on on, on this API. So now we're gonna uh, go quickly over the latest developments. So first of all, we welcome a new core committer to to the team. Uh, he's been he's from Austria, from EOX and he's been basically working on OGC API processes and coverages. There was one release this year, and there are uh, three planned releases. Uh, one will be very soon, uh, as of this month. And PyGeo API has been very active in the, in the OGC uh, code sprints. Uh, this is very important because the, the code sprints benefit from the feedback from, from the implementers. Uh, from the implementations like PyGeo API. So it's uh, in a way contributing to the development of the standards. Uh, at the same time, it's keeping uh, updating with uh, the latest developments and it's providing to the users uh, the, uh, everything that is being um, developed in the, in the standards, even if they are not yet released. So there was a, um, a code sprint in October last year and the PyGeo API was there, and also, um, as usual, in the joint code sprint. So this is a, a code sprint along with the OSGU and Apache Software Foundation. Um, and this year it was uh, in, in February, and PyGeo API was, was there as well. So uh, regarding the uh, admin API, so as I mentioned before, there's a, a <coughs> API configuration workflow, so you can do everything uh, that you, you can do through the um, through, through PyGeo API, you can, it's exposed here. Uh, there are, uh, this, this opens the possibility of developing uh, custom uh, web UIs, so you don't need to be restricted to the user interface that is offered out of the box with PyGeo API, but you can potentially develop your, your own uh, user interface. So there is also support for um, OGC API features part four, which uh, it's uh, crude, so is uh, basically what was known uh, in WFS as uh, transactions, and you can do that uh, through the API, so you are able to uh, alter, update the data, uh, delete, um, and as well as uh, read the data. So in terms of compliance, uh, in, um, in the last uh, 
period that we are covering now, uh, PyGeo API became uh, certified compliant with the uh, OGC API tiles, and as I mentioned, it's in the process of being certified for OGC API processes. And there are also new plugins. So uh, there is a CSW facet plugin. This is a plugin for uh, OGC API records, and basically it allows you to uh, proxy uh, an implementation of uh, CSW and uh, publish it as um, OGC API records. So it's very useful uh, for someone who wants to migrate from the first generation of uh, OGC web services and wants to make their metadata available um, with OGC API record interfaces. The same thing for uh, WMTS, so there is a plugin uh, WMTS facades, so if you have a WMTS server publishing your, your data, for instance, your raster tiles, uh, you can publish, republish them as uh, OGC API tiles uh, using this plugin. And there's really like minimum configuration in order to do the, these two things. It's probably like something like five minutes. And there's this also uh, a plugin for uh, um, the OGC API processes uh, uh, for uh, Shapely. So, for anyone who's interested in that. So, yeah. Thanks, Joanna. Um, continuing on in terms of latest uh, uh, developments, with uh, being an OSGO project, we have a project steering committee, and we have an RFC process, so we, um, we agreed on and voted on uh, and drafted, well, we ratified RFC 2, which um, shows a signal of the project, that the project is maturing and you know, we're, we're starting to, we've started to encounter you know, issues with dependencies and operating systems and versionitis and all these things. So we established RFC2, which is our dependency policy, uh, which, um, which, says the, uh, which defines a baseline for an operating system for all the builds. So that um, is going to help with uh, stability and security in terms, of, uh, in terms of moving forward. So we did have some issues on all of those things and it's, um, you know, whether you're installing through PIP or, or Docker or Debian or something else, there's uh, slivers of, of differences there. So uh, our idea is that our RFC2 will help address those issues. We did a significant refactor of the API in, um, in March of, uh, of this year. And a big thank you to Bernhard from uh, EOX for helping out with that. So basically the project has, has grown uh, you know, very rapidly from um, a lot of participation in OGC sprints, which involves three days of landing somewhere and, and writing code 12 hours a day, and then going home and landing a feature. So uh, five or six years of that uh, has resulted in the need to refactor things. And we did a, a significant refactor in, uh, in March, and we're happy to say that uh, it, it worked out as planned. Um, so now it will be very easy and scalable to add to be able to add more APIs as almost pluggable things into a PyGeo API as the OGC API program um, advances. This also means you can add non-OGC APIs into, your, into PyGeo API if you wish at the same time. Security, we now have CVE scanning um, on every uh, commit and that's done with something called uh, Trivi, so thank you to uh, Francesco uh, for that. This year we also had uh, on the heels of the uh, OGC OSGO code sprint in, uh, in, in Evora, we also had our first ever PyGeo API code sprint. So it was a two day event. Um, there was a wiki page in report, um, which was, uh, it was very valuable. There were maybe 10 or 12 of us uh, who attended and uh, we, we really you know, helped frame the project um, at, the, at this meeting in terms of uh, you know, establishing uh, our monthly meetings again. And, uh, and really address some of the, you know, maintainer, uh, the issues with maintainers. I mean, at some point we had 45 pull requests and we were getting, you know, 10, 20 pull requests a month uh, kind of thing. So it got, you know, v uh, very busy and uh, we were able to implement a stale bot to try to keep the issues fresh and, and, uh, and keep the maintenance burden uh, a bit low. That said, we did implement the policy that we would address any issue or pull request within, I think, five or, or ten business days so that it doesn't go unanswered and it gets uh, closed for nothing. Um, we, so big thank you to Ricardo uh, for, for implementing that in, uh, in March. And our next code sprint will be in uh, 2025. So stay tuned on the mailing list and on our, our social media for, uh, for, for our next code sprint. Selected recent projects. So um, from Francesco, the Italy municipality of uh, Rome has a OGC API features 
uh, deployment that they make available. So this was deployed in the last uh, in the last few months. In the last month or so, Australia, so Geoscience Australia, has published their PyGeo API endpoint against their linked data um, infrastructure. So great to see that from our Australian colleagues. Uh, UN, uh, United Nations WMO, there's a, there's a data exchange project called WIS2, or WMO Information System. There's a uh, reference implementation called WIS2Box and provides an API component, and PyGeo API is powering that component. This is, involved, this is installed in over 50 countries. Uh, at the moment, and it's exchanging real-time mission-critical weather, climate, and water data. And there we can see some maps and graphs. Roadmap, where do we go from here? In OGC, there's an evolving activity around PubSub, or Publisher Subscribe. So this is event-driven architecture, which is incoming, becoming increasingly important. Um, and OGC is, is recognizing this, and we've done this at WMO as well. So uh, PyGeo API will be implementing the requirements of the OGC API PubSub efforts. It's initially in the EDR specification, but it will become a more generic PubSub capability. So what does this mean? This means you'll be able to deploy PyGeo API and have things like, you know, every time a new feature is added, maybe send a message to a broker uh, in, addition to, uh, in addition to accessing that data through classic HTTP uh, RESTful design patterns. We do want to get to a 1.0 um, at, uh, uh, at some point. Um, OGC API styles is on our roadmap as well. We want to ensure that we're compliant against all the OGC standards that have tests, uh, and we want to be able to implement um, GitHub actions on all the OGC site testing, so Ricardo is working on that, so thanks again. Uh, we're working on a TileDB feature, feature provider, and we want to provide HTML templating for data set specific uh, uh, things. So right now our HTML templating is for an entire website, but we're specializing that so you can have different look and feels for different data sets. So let's say you have a data set, you have a collection which is a catalog, then maybe you'll have a search widget and that will look a little bit different than paging through uh, you know, weather observations, for example. Service providers, so we do have, uh, if, if you go to this page here, we do have a number of service providers who either do core implementation, uh, custom integration, uh, deployment, uh, hosting, features enhancements, uh, the whole thing. So there are a number of growing service providers on this page if, you, uh, if you're looking for, for, for something like that. And there's our support page, so a number of our service providers, which is uh, great. And if you are providing service on PyGeo API, please uh, come onto this page and there's instructions there on how to add yourself to this page. So we'd like uh, to get the word out as much as possible. Of course, we also have uh, swag. Um, so there's t-shirts, uh, coffee mugs, and all these things. So it's on the OSGO uh, Redbubble shop. So uh, you can um, uh, log in there and, uh, and take a look. And we will leave you with, uh, with a few links, but we wanted to give you a, a mid-year uh, mid update. The project is extremely busy, and we're, we're managing the, uh, the maintenance burden, and we're still adding uh, new features. We're on the road to 1.0. I think we're in, uh, we're, we're in a strong position to continue to evolve, and that's mostly due to the project steering committee, um, as well as the number of core committers, uh, the users, and the entire community. So I'd like to thank Joanna and Juiced, Paul, the other PSC members and the, and the developers in the community. So that is our update for now. Thank you for your attention, and I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, many thanks. Uh, so are there any questions? Oh, yeah. I love the ones which are totally in the back. Thank you very much. Uh, is it possible to develop uh, pro provider plugins outside of your GitHub source tree? I saw. Thank you. <laughs> that was the answer, right? Okay. More questions? Hi, thanks for your talk. Um, just regarding this OGC API features part four, which is the transaction. So um, as far as I understood, it's um, as a backend, it's only possible um, with MongoDB or so. So uh, because I was looking for a, having a PostGIS database with some vector data and then edit it via OGC API features part four. And as my knowledge is not possible yet, I'm just wondering what the plans for this are. 
Good question. So the question was around support of transactions. Uh, so Paiju API is, uh, has a number of plugins, and the way the plugins are governed is that um, you know we're not going to we're, we're going to let the market decide on how mature all of those plugins are. So when you go to the documentation of Paiju API, there's a matrix and a table for each plugin type and what it supports. So if somebody wants plugins in a certain somebody wants transactions in a certain plugins and they're not there and there's demand then it gets implemented one way or another. Having said that, for part four, we have support, uh, transactional support for Mongo, we have transactional support, support for Elasticsearch, as well as uh, TinyDB, and we, are, we will be adding shortly uh, transactional support for Postgres. So um, that's a bit of an update there, so contributions are always welcome. Uh, pull requests will come. Uh, more questions? Oh. Okay, then I guess that's all. Many thanks. Thank you.